It is a raucous environment here at Brian Denny Stadium as you take a look at Nick Saban, who has done a tremendous job. Two national championships already in the bank with the Crimson Tide. There was a threat of rain earlier, but it looks like we're in good shape. 83 degrees, overcast, some scattered showers perhaps on the horizon, but overall a good day weather-wise for some football. Week number two of the college football season, and the Crimson Tide looking to hold on to that number one ranking. Western Kentucky won the toss. Alabama will receive. Crimson tied from the six. Straight ahead running down to the 28-yard line and good field position for Alabama. A 22-yard return as we are underway. This stadium seats over 101,000 fans. Tickets hard to come by for the season opener as you take the first look at A.J. McCarron. Boy, did he make a name for himself in last year's national championship game. He's just a junior. They feel awfully good about the passing game this year. One back to start things off on first and ten. And a tie go to the ground and a big hole on the left side for Lacey. Who's tripped up at the 45-yard line. That'll move the chains. Jonathan Dowling on the stop. Alabama overloaded the formation to the right. There was nobody to the left side of the offensive line and a big gaping hole for Eddie Lacy as he looks like he's pretty healthy after that ankle injury slowed him in the opener. McCarron throws, quick slant caught, and a whole lot of daylight past the 30, down to the 20, and inside the 10-yard line before Arius Wright. Brings down Kevin Norwood, the junior out of Mississippi. Here's Kevin Norwood in the slot right there. Nice decision by AJ to throw it in the underneath guy there. And breaks free, not the way that Western Kentucky wanted to start this football game with two big plays from Alabama's offense. 47 yards on that hookup. Norwood, kind of the old man on this Alabama receiving court. They go back to the ground, and this time a good job of pursuing by the Hilltoppers as Eddie Lacy goes backwards. Andrew Jackson, number four, very talented linebacker on the stop. Let's take a look. And how Alabama is doing in the red zone brought to you by Verizon Wireless last year. 88% that's second best in the SEC. 55% of the time they reach pay dirt. Now backed up near the 15 on second and goal. McCarron over the middle. Touchdown, Alabama. Christian Jones. How about A.J. McCarron that time? Did a good job of looking the safety off. Knew he was going to have Christian Jones down the middle of that cover two defense the entire way. Throws a little high. Nice adjustment by Jones for the touchdown. Shelley on for the extra point. And Alabama makes it look easy. A four-play, 72-yard drive. Take a look at the inside receiver here. That's Jones. 
Got covered two. Nobody down the middle of the field. AJ McCarron again looking off the safety to the backside. Well, firing it in there for the touchdown. Now, Christian Jones, just a sophomore. There are a lot of young freshmen and sophomores on this Alabama receiving core. Jones is one. DeAndre White, we'll see a lot of him today. Cyrus Jones and Amari Cooper, two freshmen they are very high on. Doug Nussmeyer, the new offensive coordinator here at Alabama, mentioned how deep this receiving core is. Last year, they had a couple top-tier guys in Marquise, Marquise Mays and Hanks. Those guys have gone now, but a lot more depth. I think you'll see today that quality from top to bottom, maybe as good as anybody that they've had here since Nick Saban's time in Tuscaloosa. Well, if you're the Hilltoppers, you just took a heavy blow from Alabama. You got to be able to bounce back after less than a two minute drive to start things off. They've been upset with practice this week. Looks like he got their attention with that media conference he had on Wednesday when he got after those guys because they certainly came out here and looked sharp on that first possession. Foster going to have to put it back on the tee. Alabama with two kickers, Foster the bigger leg. He'll be on kickoffs. Jeremy Shelley, who we saw on the extra point. And he'll do field goal duties as well. Back for Western Kentucky, it'll be Andrews and Robinson. Terrific crowd here at Bryant Denny Stadium for the home opener. Touchbacks now go to the 25, and Andrews, who thought about taking it out, decides, yep, let's just set things up at the 25 yard line. So we get our first look at the Hilltoppers offense. They are led by Kwan Jakes, a senior, a four-year starter and of St. Augustine, Florida. They actually have several players from the state of Florida, as you see the numbers on Jakes. They'd like to see that number on the left, 55%. That's the one number coach talked to us about that he needs to improve. He did mention to us when we talked to him on Wednesday that he has improved with his accuracy. He's improved with his decision making. And I think that was reflected last week as he threw for 79% completion percentage with number one in the NCAA in terms of pass efficiency. This is Andrews. They're do everything back. Their version of Reggie Bush bottled up after a short gain as we look at the impact players for Western Kentucky. Take a look at Andrew Jackson. He's the big time linebacker. We'll look at him more. He's an SEC caliber player according to Willie Taggart and then Kwan Jakes. We've mentioned what he's done as a three year starter now for Western Kentucky. He had to transition from running a spread offense before Taggart got here. Now they're running the West Coast and really a lot more comfortable this season according to Coach Taggart. Don't sleep on 82 Jack Doyle. The all Sun Belt tight end as well. He'll be a frequent target for Jakes. Backs and fires. And he airmails that one high, intended for the tight end, Jack Doyle. Surprising that they missed that one there. You remember talking to Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator for Alabama yesterday, talked about how good Western Kentucky is in the stick game. Jack Doyle, particularly there, running the, the tight end stick quick out. Even if he's covered, he knows how to use leverage. And that time, Jake's let that throw get away from him. So the first third down and long. And if the Alabama defense has its way, it'll be the first of many. Draw play. Good hole left side. Nifty run. As Andrews wiggles his way near the 44 yard line. Clinton Dix on the tackle. Alabama was bringing a little bit of pressure from the left side there. They ran the draw and got it out the back door. Nice call by Willie Taggart as Alabama tried to get after the quarterback expecting a pass. They tripped him up a little bit with the draw play. Andrews is going to have to play big. The number one back, Keyshawn Simpson has a knee injury and in all likelihood will not play. So number five has to come up huge today. Uh, first down, back to the ground between the tackles and some good hard running. Grinding it up the middle is Andrews. Hubbard on the stop. 
This Alabama defense, extremely talented, but also very young, a lot of new starters. And they're still trying to figure out what will the identity of this defense become under that man, Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator. That was one of the things Nick Saban was concerned about with the youth, their ability to communicate. Last week they had some troubles in their checks against Michigan. And as you see the shifts and the motions that Western Kentucky likes to use, it can confuse Alabama's defense a bit. And a pitch play on second down. Great second effort and a fumble. Ball is loose, and Alabama has it. 92, Damian Square, one of the captains of the defense, on the recovery. With Dion Blue, the field corner that comes up and makes the big hit, something yesterday Kirby Smart mentioned to us that Blue, maybe not the guy that, I nah, wasn't Blue, I'm sorry, Blue is the corner they like to play to the field side because he's not as physical as Milner is. I believe that's Nico Johnson. Yeah, Nico Johnson came in there and laid the lumber on him. Nico Johnson, the grizzled veteran on this defense, now in his senior campaign. Good defense as Bama tries to run it on first down with Eddie Lacy. That was Andrew Jackson right there, the guy we talked about as an impact player. One of the things that the defensive coordinator Lance Gidry said to us is Jackson as good as anybody has ever been around, but sometimes tries to compensate for everybody else, doesn't necessarily play his assignment or gaps the way he should because he's trying to compensate, but that time got some penetration and disrupted that run from the start. On second and nine, play action. McCarron has all day and has running room and slides after a pickup of about five, maybe six. A.J. McCarron, the junior from Mobile, Alabama. Preseason all third team this year. Our first and ten line today brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. And right now, Alabama needs the 39-yard line to get that first down. Third down and two. McCarron to throw. He's got nobody open, going to try and die for it himself. It'll depend on the spot. Great coverage by the Hilltoppers. Cole Tischer on the pursuit of McCarron, who says Alabama's got it, and they do. You don't think of A.J. McCarron necessarily as being a rushing threat, but back-to-back -back plays there. Picks up a little more than 10 yards and sets Alabama up with the first time, first down inside the 40. We talked about this Alabama offensive line. They are mammoth, they are experienced, and they are good. Maybe the best in America. McCarron on play action, and he is sacked. Arius Wright. The defensive back out of Duluth, Georgia, dropping McCarron for a loss of nine. Take a look at the right side of the offensive line there. Overload with a couple guys coming off the edge. Arius Wright, the cornerback that Gidry told us, physical, plays well inside. They like to use him in the blitz out of the nickel. That time did a good job coming off the corner untouched, sacking A.J. McCarron deep. On second down and 19 with Lacey the lone back. They give it to him. And he'll gobble up about nine back near the original line of scrimmage. Tischer on the stop, but a good surge by that Crimson Tide front five. One thing Coach Gidry told us, they were going to try to sell out to stop the run. Last year against LSU, they did a good job. They were able to force them to throw the football. They were in the ball game up until halftime there. Today, they want to do the same thing to Alabama. That time, a bunch of guys up in the box, but Alabama's offensive line able to push them back, pick up a little over 10 yards there. Third down and nine. Four in the pattern. But McCarron under hot pursuit and goes down again, and the ball is loose. Smith knocked him from behind, 
And the Crimson Tide recover. If Alabama turns it over, that's a news flash in itself. Normally very good at protecting the ball. That time, again, Western Kentucky didn't even have to bring pressure there. Off the edge, that's Quintero Smith. And if there was one thing that Alabama struggled with last week, it was protecting in the pocket. Michigan able to put a lot of pressure when they were able to throw the football from the pocket. That's why you saw a lot of boots, a lot of nakeds getting A.J. McCarron outside and free from some of that pressure. Cody Mandel, the punter, going to try to pin him inside the 10. Almost, but just out of the reach. 6.46 remaining in the first quarter. It's Alabama 7 and Western Kentucky nothing. Mike Morgan with Chris Doring here in Tuscaloosa. Alabama 7, Western Kentucky nothing with 6.46 remaining in the first quarter. Time now for the C Spire Conference call. And as you look at the top 25, it is littered with Southeastern Conference teams. The top 10 alone, you have five, Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Arkansas, South Carolina winning today, and the Florida Gators in a big battle with Texas A&M today, right now at number 24. That's a huge game for the Gators. Yeah, Florida making their first trip to Texas in quite a long time here. Did see they just scored a touchdown. I think they went up 7-3. We'll see if Texas a and is able to answer. Hilltoppers have it on first and ten. And a nice play, first down yardage. Trade to Priest on the tackle. Take a look at Willie Taggart there. He's the head coach, Western Kentucky. Talked about his team changing their mentality coming into a game like this. He knew it was going to be a dog fight. Alabama comes out right away with a couple big plays, a quick drive right down for a touchdown. You worried about Western Kentucky getting blown out, but they took the punch, hung in there, and we'll see if they can put together something offensively against Alabama's defense. That man, Willie really Taggart, has his imprints all over the Western Kentucky program. Former player, former assistant coach, now the head coach. On first down, Hilltoppers, another fumble. A pile up, and Alabama's got it. Second turnover on Western Kentucky. Andrews had it jarred loose. The big D lineman there, getting his arm in, stripping that ball, and that is not the way, if you're Willie Taggart, Coming out first down after your defense puts together a good stop. Maybe perhaps change the momentum back in your favor a little bit. Not what he was looking for at all. Two early turnovers, a nightmare scenario for Western Kentucky. And for Nick Saban and company, another chance to capitalize here. Already up seven. T.J. Yeldon is into the game. McCarron has time, fires, deep ball, touchdown, Alabama, Kevin Norwood. <laughs> 33 yards for the junior out of Mississippi. There's the impact player we talked about before the game. Kevin Norwood stepped up big time in the BCS National Championship last year when his name was called. Ready to have a breakout season for the Tide. Again, you see the trip formation to the left. McCarron does a good job at that time looking the defense off. And a nice catchable ball for Norwood for the touchdown. Shelly hammers home the extra point. Already two touchdown passes for McCarron. The last one to Kevin Norwood. Watch this throw by number 10, right on the money, and Bama's up 14. Matt, Kevin, thank you so much. The score here from Tuscaloosa, Alabama 14, Western Kentucky nothing, a nightmare start for the Hilltoppers, Chris. The one thing they cannot afford to do is be careless with the football, and that's what they've been. 
thing that I like there offensively for Alabama is big turnover by your defense. You're in plus territory. Nussmeyer takes a shot on the first play. They're able to connect and create even more momentum for the tie. That'll be another touchback as Andrews takes a step and then takes a knee. So first and 10 from the 25 yard line and the Hilltoppers need something good to happen in a hurry. It won't be easy against an Alabama defense that has a lot of players returning from that national championship team a year ago. It's tough enough trying to beat that defense, but when you're turning the football over, giving them opportunities in short field situations, it's almost impossible. Leon Allen into the game, a freshman from Bradenton, Florida, the running back. They go to the up back instead, and Alabama not fooled, stacked up after a gain of about a yard. We had an opportunity yesterday to look at Western Kentucky's team up close during their walkthrough. There's some SEC type players out there. Their bodies are big, they're strong, they're athletic looking. I did their game two years ago against Kentucky. They've come a long way in terms of development. You mentioned their ability to recruit down in the state of Florida. A ton of guys they've gotten to come out of there and they look like they can compete with an SEC program. They've got some athletes, and again, it is Western Kentucky, not Western Carolina. They are Division One. they are in the Sun Belt Conference, and they have won eight of the last nine. On second down and nine, strong running, but Alabama is there to meet it. Huge stop by 35, Nico Johnson. How about Nico Johnson had a chance to sit down and talk with him yesterday. Obviously an impressive football player on the field. But this guy, well-spoken, very intelligent, very complimentary of the rest of his team and his teammates. The thing that I like the most, they're very hungry. It seems from talking that every man we had an opportunity to sit down with, last year's over with, they're focused on getting better week to week in pursuit of trying to win another national championship. For Nico Johnson, that'd be three in his four years here. Fairly impressive. Have to get a, get a, a bigger display case yeah. for all that jewelry. On third and seven. A dump ball pass at the 30 and knocked down. I think that will be first down yardage for Antonio Andrews. Again, he is their everything back. You'll see him on special teams, and they will run it with him. They'll throw it to him. You're going to see number five a lot. Yeah, Willie Tiger mentioned him as their Reggie Bush. Does a good job on the little Texas route out of the backfield. And as Kirby Smart told us, Jake's very good in the third and medium plays. They want to try to keep him out of that situation. That time able to convert. Get some momentum back on their side offensively. From the eye. Burrowing ahead for a modest game. That's Leon Allen. Robert Lester on another tackle. One thing to look at with Western Kentucky's defense, our offense and their personnel, a lot of different tight ends they interchange together. You'll see three, even four tight ends in there at a time. If it looks like a team you're familiar with, it's probably Stanford and what Jim Harbaugh used to do out there. You remember how many good tight ends they had last year as they were very explosive, both blocking and, and running and catching the football down the field. You'll see a lot of that today with this talented roster of tight ends that Willie Taggart has. Trying to jump cut, and if he kept his footing at the 40, Leon Allen might have had a big game. That's the freshman there, another Florida guy out of Bradenton. Willie Taggart's hometown knows that area very well. Leon Allen did have a little, little gap out the back door there, but just tripped out before he could get to the open field. Might have stepped over one of his linemen, Luis Polanco. So another third and long, third down and seven. Western Kentucky has been good on third down. McNeil in motion. McNeil catches it, but that is a couple of yards short. Willie McNeil over the middle caught it at the 45, and that went backwards. Vinny Sinceri in on the tackle. Nice job by Alabama's defense of knowing the down and distance. They allow the short throw underneath, and Sinceri 
One of the most aggressive tacklers in that Crimson Tide secondary does a good job shop, stopping him short of the first down marker. Vinny's got some pretty good pedigree. The son of Sal Sinceri, the defensive coordinator now at Tennessee. Got a brother in Pittsburgh playing quarterback as well. Not that they've looked very good offensively yet this year. A rough start to the season for the Panthers. Jones back to receive the punt. A wobbler. And they let it bounce. And a nice job by the Hilltoppers fielding it inside the five. Good special teams play. Alabama offense back on the field when we return. I hate to be negative with anybody. All right, but when you people start writing stuff about people that were playing that doesn't give them the proper respect, I mean, that, 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 that's not fair. It's not fair to them, to their players who work hard to earn it. It's not fair to our players who need to respect them and to make presumptions like you all make really, really upsets me. It, it really does. I mean, it's so unfair. You don't need to write about that. There's so many more good things that you can write about happening around here that people would be interested in. I'd love to see some of you do a little bit of research and figure it out. Well, Mike, Chris, it was that exact rant that Coach explained at his radio show Thursday night. He was upset because before the game at Michigan, the media was hammering on how young and experienced Alabama was and how they were going to be able to manage it. And then after that game, he said the same media was practically handing them the national title. You know that Coach Saban is big on respect and accountability, not just for his team, but for the opponents and the rest of their season. And that's what he was trying to colorfully explain. Nice hole along the right side of that offensive line for the talented freshman T.J. Yeldon. Mike, I like what he came out and said. Obviously a little upset about how the media changed their perception of his team after just one game. But I think it's more about his own team. As I mentioned in the open, he wants those guys to continually pursue excellence and get better from week to week. They were not as good as what that 41 to 14 score indicated. You look at it on tape, a lot of mistakes, a lot of blown defenses that Michigan didn't take advantage of that they need to get better at. And I think that that was the message he tried to give them in the locker room and tried to give it through the media as well. Yelled it again on second and short. And he plows ahead for the first down. As we near the end of the first quarter, we'll take a look at the impact players for Alabama. Yeah, a ton of impact players you could probably choose from, but already today we've seen two touchdown passes from A.J. McCarron, a touchdown reception by Kevin Norwood, and we're going to see a lot of T.J. Yeldon here, the freshman we talked about, true freshman. That was big last week against Michigan, 111 yards on 11 carries. First guy. First true freshman in the history of this Alabama program to do that in their debut. Yelled in behind Fowler, the fullback. McCarron tip ball, and it falls incomplete. Dowling got his paw on it, the former Florida Gator. Now already has a big impact at Western Kentucky after transferring and sitting out last year. Was told he was the best scout team player in the history of college football, given those guys that looked last year. But as you mentioned, a transfer from Florida in his opener last week against App State, or, uh, Austin P blocked a kick and an interception, so already paying dividends. This will be the final play of the opening quarter. McCarron, quick slant, juggled, almost picked off, and then incomplete. Intended for Bell, and Arius Wright almost had it. We go to the second, Alabama leading at 14 to nothing. Kevin Norwood, the junior, one of two touchdown passes from McCarron. Over 100,000 fans in attendance today. Alabama leading Western Kentucky 14 0, the home opener for the Crimson Tide as we get ready for the start of quarter number two. Crimson Tide facing a third and ten. Draw play. This is Lacey and nicely bottled up by the Western Kentucky defense, Andrew Jackson. We told you about him, number four, their leading man on defense. When we talked to 
Guidry, the defensive coordinator the other day, we asked him to tell us about Jackson. What kind of NFL player does he remind him of? He said it's easy, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is his hero. He went to the same high school as Ray Lewis and really has patterned his game as a sideline to sideline ferocious type linebacker already today, very active for the Hilltopper defense. Wobbling punt, takes a bounce at the 45. And it'll roll dead inside the 35-yard line. Well, I mentioned the crowd today, around 101,000 fans, and a very famous face as well here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. The real deal, Evander Holyfield in the house. Now, you might be wondering, why is he wearing a Western Kentucky shirt? He is actually the uncle of Demetrius Coley, one of the fullbacks on the roster for the Hilltoppers. We talked about Western Kentucky being able to take a punch. That was a guy that not only could <laughs> take a punch, but certainly deliver one as well. I don't know if he's ever retired. He might be looking for another matchup. That's what all those guys do, right. George Foreman. Oh, yeah. they, they all just keep boxing into their 40s and 50s. Hey, if you can do it. 14.08 to play, first half. Allen stopped dead in his tracks by Trey DePriest. One of the interesting things, you'll continue to see Western Kentucky trying to run the football right at this Alabama defense. You think, wow, that's kind of a futile effort, but they want to remain balanced. They want to do what they do in the West Coast offense. It's predicated on being able to run the football, play action pass, a lot of crossers you'll see. Western Kentucky using here today, but it's a very important that they don't become one-dimensional and just give up on the run and try to throw the football. That's when this defensive front of Alabama will pin their ears back and really put you in a tough situation. The guy who's been quiet is the tight end Jack Doyle. He's at the bottom of your screen. On second down, and they do find a different target. This time, pass is complete. And that is number 80, Mitchell Henry, one of the backup tight ends. Yeah, Mit Mitchell Henry, one of those guys that was out last week because of injury, had a leg injury. You'll see him right there. Does a good job of getting a good release of inside leverage, and then that middle is wide open. K1 Jakes does a good job of coming back to his backside receiver there. As I mentioned, about three or four really good, talented tight ends on this roster. Hilltoppers on the move down the sideline and incomplete. And John Fulton on the coverage, the junior out of Manning, South Carolina, intended for Dowling. Jake saw man coverage out there to the right. Does a good job. Got to get that other hand up, though. It's a catchable ball. And last week, one of the things we saw from the Hilltopper wide receivers was making plays. Jake's, we talked about his high passing percentage through four touchdowns last week to four different receivers. So not afraid to spread the football around. Andrews and Jones in the backfield. Hilltoppers to the air. Looked like that one was deflected before caught by Doyle, the tight end. Really like Doyle. He's a guy that was a leftover player from the previous staff. And with Tagger coming in, has really been able to utilize him well in this West Coast offense. A great student as well. Certainly a valuable member of this football team. We look for his number to get called frequently today. It seems every time we look up, Western Kentucky has a third down and seven. It's another one right here. Hilltoppers two of three on third down. And a timeout called by Coach Taggart and company. Eleven fifty seven remaining Alabama 14 Western Kentucky nothing as we take a look at the SEC Network scholar athletes Jack Doyle who we've talked about a senior now physical education major a GPA of three point three seven and how about ha ha Clinton Dix a three point zero five GPA just a sophomore. Doyle, one of
one of those guys that has an opportunity to play at the next level. And that's what I like about games like this. Even though you may be overmatched by a team like Alabama, he gets to test his skills against some of the best and get you ready to play in the NFL. Let's check in with the guys in studio, guys. Thank you much on third down and seven. Pass to the flat, broken tackle, still on his feet at the 30. And finally brought down near the 21-yard line is the ball out. I believe they whistled it down. It is. It'll be a first down for Western Kentucky. Kadeem Jones. Mike, this is something you don't see all that often. Nico Johnson with a chance to make a play short of the first down mark. But a good job cutting back and picking up the first down. Hilltoppers quickly with the snap and running straight ahead. A couple yards down to the 19 yard line, Antonio Andrews. That was something that Nick Saban said to us, some things that they needed to clean up, perhaps being a little bit better in the tackling department. A lot of missed tackles last week against Michigan and there again, you saw one from Nico Johnson, their senior linebacker. Best drive of the day for Western Kentucky. Incomplete. Intended for Andrews. Now you can catch one of the premier bowl games featuring the SEC taking on the Big East at the BBVA Compass Bowl January the 5th. For more information, go to BBVACCompassBowl.com today. Mike Morgan with Chris Doring here in Tuscaloosa, the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide leading Western Kentucky 14 to nothing. A couple of early turnovers helping out Alabama. Western Kentucky with easily its best drive of the day. This is the eighth play of the drive. Saw pressure on that last play, made Jakes throw the ball before he wanted to. This time looks like Alabama's bringing it again. Under hot pursuit, ball knocked loose. Picked up by Alabama. Still on his feet is Sinceri. And the third turnover of the day. Alabama will have it. Xavier Dixon knocked it loose. Sinceri on the recovery. Take a look at this opportunistic Alabama defense. Stripping, going after the ball, not only trying to get the sack there, but trying to create a turnover. That's the third one we've seen today where Alabama's been able to pull it free. Western Kentucky has got to do a better job of securing that football. Great job by Dixon. A big time recruit out of Griffin, Georgia, made the ESPN top 150, number 22 overall coming out. As the tie going back to the ground game, T.J. Yeldon, speaking of great recruits, the freshman, the current SEC co-freshman of the week, T.J. Yeldon. When you see running backs making long runs like Yeldon did last week, like we've seen today already, not only is it because of the offensive line, one thing this Alabama receiving core has prided themselves on is blocking downfield. You saw Norwood there last week. They did a great job downfield as well, and that's what allows you to get those big runs. Out of the gun on second and two, it's Yeldon again. And he'll tiptoe out of bounds after gobbling up enough for the first down. Now, T.J. Yeldon last week against Michigan. Boy, did he put on a show. And when you think about all the great freshman running backs that Alabama has seen, look what Ingram did as a freshman, 96 yards. Richardson more of a backup role in his freshman campaign. Yeldon, the first ever Alabama true freshman to go over 100 yards. And that was only on 11 carries. You saw four different guys play that tailback position. It just speaks to the talent on this roster at running back. First and 10, pass complete near midfield, little shake and bake. And that'll be first down yardage for number two, Dion. DeAndre White brought down by Young. DeAndre White is a guy they think is still learning, still coming on. He's got a chance to be a good one. He's got to learn how to run routes a little bit better, a little more precise. Last week, he did have a big touchdown reception on a nice stutter go, but they want him to be a little bit more disciplined. You saw him last time out there, isolated to the left. And a good job on the hitch route, catching it and getting upfield for the first down. 
Alabama on the move. McCarron. Oh, a wide open target. That's Yeldon. He's got good hands. He showed that against Michigan as well. Robinson stops him, but not before he gets the first down. Nice little mismatch there as Yeldon's coming in the, out of the backfield, matched up on Andrew Jackson. McCarron does a good job of waiting on him to run the wheel route to get to the flat and get up the sideline wide open for the first down reception. 15 more yards for the Crimson Tide. Yeldon stays in at tailback. Yeldon this time goes backwards. Great pursuit by Western Kentucky. And it seems like every time we see a big play by that defense, old number four, Andrew Jackson's in the middle of it. Andrew Jackson made the tackle, but it was Ramel Lewis that actually had the penetration, caused the running back to have to bounce a little bit, and then great pursuit by the Hilltopper defense for the loss behind the line of scrimmage. Toyota's first and ten line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Bama needs the 17 for another first down. McCarron sets up the screen. It's Yeldon. Tap dances and finally falls forward near the 22. Remember the name T.J. Yeldon. You're going to see a lot of, a lot of them in the Southeastern Conference the next few years. One thing that Alabama does really well is the screen game. That time they had a nice call into the blitz. Western Kentucky tried to bring some pressure off the left side, vacated a big space for Yeldon. Easy reception and now third manageable for the for tight offense. On third and five, McCarron looking end zone. Touchdown! Second one of the day for Jones, a juggling act. How about the precision that we've seen Andrew A.J. McCarron throwing today? Nice corner route there to Jones, right on the money. Jones bobbles a little bit, running out of real estate over there, but able to secure it before he steps out of bounds for the touchdown. McCarron with three first half touchdown passes and they'll take another look. I'm not so sure he had full control of that before the right foot stepped out of bounds. Our referee today is Matt Austin. We've got a good crew today in Tuscaloosa. Enjoyed talking to those guys yesterday. Had a chance to sit down with them in the hotel and really gracious with their time explaining some of the rule changes and some of the stuff we can expect today. But as you mentioned, if Jones secures this catch the first time, it's an easy touchdown. But take a look at Jones's right foot. Did he have possession of the ball? His back was what blocking the, the referee. What about the left foot here? When he finally gets it, freeze left foot. I think that's got to I don't stand. think he's got it yet. You don't think so? the right foot is down. It doesn't look like he's got full possession. Take a look at the ball as that right foot right there is still bobbling as the ball yeah. as the toe touches the line. Got to be close. You got to catch the football the first time. Wow. And you just heard the ruling on the field does stand, not confirmed. I'm always on the receiver side, so you know <laughs> those guys normally don't do wrong, but uh, in that case, a quick decision by the referee. Well, you didn't juggle the football much. You didn't have to worry about that. I had a few drops here and there, but uh, <laughs> try not to remember those. <laughs> Meanwhile, the extra point knocked through by Shelley. And the day for A.J. McCarron and that man, Christian Jones, a good day continues. Second touchdown reception. Starts off looking like a drop to the bobble, then secures it. Today's SEC Network game is brought to you by the 2013 Buick Verano. Unexpected luxury and a car this size.
The BBVA Cup is bowl, January the 5th in Birmingham, Alabama. And by Honda Generators. Enter the Honda Generators tailgate giveaway for your chance. Mike Morgan with Chris Doring here from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The Crimson Tide 21, the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Nothing, 6.53 to go in the first half. A very close call there. Uh, the touchdown reception by Jones from McCarron. Well, now already has three touchdown passes on the day. How about the day, though, with the accuracy? Seven of nine today so far, 156 yards, three touchdowns from McCarron. Nick Saban wanted to get him involved with a chance to make more plays down the field in the passing game. They've certainly done that here in the first half. Andrews and Robinson back deep to receive. This one will be short. Racing to it is Andrews. Trying to find some room on the right side. Can't do it. Brought down behind the 20. Hilltopper football when we return. 21 to nothing, our score. All right, thank you, Matt. Chris, we talked about how big a game that is for the Florida Gators. Who's he talking about having fun? 17-7, that looked that fun to me, at least with Florida on the side they are there. But, yeah, tough place to play. We knew about the 12th man. Obviously, Texas A&M unable to play last week. So was that an advantage for them in hiding some of the personnel that they'll use against the Gators, or was that an advantage for the Gators with Texas A&M not being able to knock some of the rust off? Looks like it was A&M's advantage at this point. Don't forget the Gators at Tennessee coming up as the Hilltoppers go to the ground on first down with Andrews. Let's send it back down to the field. Jill Montgomery standing by. Mike, as you guys know, you haven't seen Dean Milner play at all in this game. And I was just told by one of the Alabama coaching staff that it was a game time decision. There is some sort of an injury there that was not disclosed to me. They said he is available if absolutely necessary, but for right now, they're holding him out. Well, that obviously would be a big loss under different circumstances. You can breathe pretty good about it with a 21-point lead, but Milner, the reigning SEC Defensive Player of the Week, He's a special player. On second and four, there's the tight end, and there's a first down for the Hilltoppers, Jack Doyle. John Fulton getting to play in Milner's absence there. We talked about being thin at a number of different positions, and certainly at the cornerback position, that's one where there's not a lot of depth, so some young guys getting an opportunity to play today, getting some experience. That time, Fulton getting run over there by the big tight end. This Hilltoppers team has won eight out of the last nine, nearly won the Sun Belt a year ago, seven and one in conference, the only loss coming to Arkansas State. Look out. Jake's brought down behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of nine. Terrific pursuit by C.J. Mosley. That time pressure right up the middle. You saw Nico Johnson coming free there. Jake's nowhere to run. And pocket collapses for another sack of Jake's. Mosley, who has been so good in coverage, pretty good in pursuit as well. Mosley had a pick six. And that win against the Wolverines, the third of his career. On second down and long. Out of the pocket. No grounding. It'll be third and 20. Not a lot of plays to call on third and 20. That's not the situation that Willie Taggart wants to find his offense in here. Makes it very difficult. We'll see if they try to run the football, get a few yards back, and punt it back to the Alabama Crimson Tide because it's dangerous situation here on third and 20. We'll see if that Alabama defense pins its ears back here. Four man rush. And again brought down. This time a couple of yards for Jakes, but great coverage 
Chris, that's what they call a coverage sack right there. It's a coverage sack. You mentioned four guys bringing pressure there. That's just basically your D line and that nickel substituted package. And what you're starting to see is some of that strength wear down the Western Kentucky offensive line. That was one of the concerns that Coach Taggart had was can they stand up for a full four quarters right now? It looks like Alabama's front getting after that offensive line. Well, they didn't need to use number 99 last week against Austin P. Hendricks Breakfield, the punter. Jones back to receive from the 30. Bangs his way to about the 35, and that's where Alabama will have it when we return. Back here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 21-0 lead, but it's been through the air today that the Tide have had all their success with three touchdown passes from A.J. McCarron. 7-9, 156 yards for those three touchdown passes. Extremely accurate, and the Crimson Tide have the ball back here again. And with that, here's today's face-to-face -to -face moment brought to you by Edward Jones. Nick Saban right now talking to A.J. McCarron, and I would think he's got some pretty positive things to say. Don't do anything differently than what you're doing right now. He's been absolutely fantastic to this point in time. Great decision-making, finding the open man, and then delivering a strike in just about every instance. You're not going to see Nick Saban smile very often, but I would say so far he has to be pleased the way his team has come out in this ballgame. Certainly they have not been flat. Looking for more, up 21. And straight up the gut is Eddie Lacy. You, know, you mentioned balance, Chris. How about this last year? Running the football, Alabama had 2,788 yards. Passing the football, 2,797 yards. It doesn't get more balanced than that. You don't think of Alabama as being a balanced team, but with the ability to run the football the way they do, it opens up the opportunity to throw against single coverage, and certainly A.J. McCarron's been able to take advantage of that coverage as last season progressed and into this season. Already today, 156 yards through the air. And looking for more is McCarron. And he'll have it. Nice catch by Cooper before he puts it in reverse. Cooper is a freshman from Miami, and they are really high on this young man. They're really high on him, but he's going to get a face-to-face -face with Saban when he comes back. He made the catch past the first down marker and then chose to loop around and lose yardage. You can bet when he gets to the sideline, the coach is going to have something to say to him. You see A.J. McCarron distributing the ball pretty well all over the field. 8 of 10, 161 yards, and the three touchdowns. So after Cooper goes backwards, the Tide facing a third and two. Out of the eye, Lacey. Stacked up near the 45, keeps those legs grinding, but I don't think he has it. Nice job of getting a good push up on the line of scrimmage and then pursuing the football down the line. That's one thing that Lance Gidry, the defensive coordinator, mentioned to us. They've emphasized all week long is gang tackling, getting a lot of hats on the ball carrier. And Alabama is the best, one of the best in the country at making yards after contact. That time, a gang of Hillto Hilltopper defenders able to bring Lacey down short of the first down mark. Mandel on to punt. Andrews from the 10. Tries the right side and is finally written down from behind to the 24-yard line. 131 remaining. The Crimson Tide 21. And the Hilltoppers nothing. Turnovers have been the story of the day here for Western Kentucky. Careless ball carrying and an opportunistic defense has created three turnovers. 14 points off of those turnovers for the Alabama offense. Already tough enough to play against the Alabama football team that's as talented as this one. They need no help, and certainly Western Kentucky has been very generous to this point. And you know, Alabama, they don't like to return the favor. They hardly ever turn it over, so obviously a precarious spot. The Hilltoppers put themselves in in this opening half. A.J. McCarron, the story on offense for Alabama with three touchdown passes. 
Western Kentucky will get the ball on the other side of the half. We'll see if they're aggressive here with a minute 30 left to play. Over the middle and almost another turnover right through the hands of C.J. Mosley. Well, coming up at the half, the C Spire halftime report. Kevin Carter and Matt Schick will have you taken care of. Auburn dropping another one now 0-2 after falling to Mississippi State. We welcome Texas A&M and Missouri to the SCC. Two big matchups, the Aggies against the Gators and Missouri taking on the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia will be shorthanded in that one. That'll be a dangerous game in Columbia. Jakes over the middle, dumps it off to number five, Antonio Andrews. There he is again, the Reggie Bush of this Hilltopper offense. Andrews, very dangerous as he's coming out of the backfield, able to catch the ball well and get upfield. More importantly, stepping out of bounds, preserving just under a minute and 20 seconds here. We'll see if Western Kentucky can get into scoring range and create some sort of positive before going to the break. Hilltoppers do have two timeouts to work with. And a minute 19 on the clock. Jakes, Coxon fires and throws it short. And had an open target, Willie McNeil at midfield. Yeah, rare miss for Jakes. Wide open, Willie McNeil. As Willie Taggart called a nice play, got a little rub there. We call it rub instead of a pick if you're an offensive guy. <laughs> but able to get McNeil free, and Jakes just flat out missed him. So if you call it a rub, it's legal. Rub is legal. Okay. Pick is illegal. Gotcha. Yeah. And who gets to determine whether we call it a rub or a pick? Those guys in the striped shirts, I think, ultimately. Out of the gun on second and ten. And another drop, this time by Andrews. Well, while we have a chance, we'd like to recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the country. Since 2005, Allstate has donated more than $2.6 million through the Good Hands Field Goal Net Program to benefit University General Scholarship Funds. Third down and 10. Bama rushes four. And no chance for Jakes. Nobody open. And more pressure this time by Xavier Dixon, number 47. Short of turning the football over, this is exactly what you didn't want to do if you were Willie Taggart. Now you've left a minute, four seconds for Alabama to get the ball back. And I'm sure Nick Saban at this point in the season would like nothing more than get a, get a look at that two-minute offense and see if A.J. AJ McCarron can put some more points on the board before the half. Field on Jones back to receive. The sophomore will let it bounce and a good bounce for the Hilltoppers. As it rolls dead at the 10, a 57 yard punt with no return. Now if you're Alabama here, you're up 21, 51 seconds left. You take your foot off the gas a little bit here. Do I? I wouldn't take my foot off the gas. <laughs> Bad question for you. Nick Saban, perhaps, maybe a little more conservative, a defensive-minded coach. But as I mentioned, this is an opportunity to see guys play, see how they react, get a little two-minute experience here, and see if you can learn something here in the final minute of this ballgame, in the final minute of the half of this ballgame. The Florida version of Steve Spurrier didn't know the meaning of taking your foot off now, the we, gas. We'd be five wide here from our own 10-yard <laughs> line. He's dialed it back a little bit at South Carolina. McCarran under center. Probing the left side is Lacey. Modest gain on the play as we look at the drive chart today for Alabama. And again, a lot of these drives set up by Western Kentucky turnovers. Punt, touchdown, punt, touchdown, punt, touchdown. A nice uh, formula going there. And they'll kneel this one out here and go to the half. You can't blame Nick Saban for not being aggressive here in this situation. They've done fairly well on offense all day. You don't want to give any cheap points to Western Kentucky before the half, so they're content to go into the locker room with a 21-0 lead. Now Nick Saban challenged his team to stay focused, stay motivated, 
for this opponent. And I think in half number one, that goal was accomplished. As the clock winds down. And the end of half number one, Alabama 21 points. A.J. McCarron with three touchdown passes in the first half. Western Kentucky unable to put any points on the board. A lot of the backups in for Alabama. We'll see who gets to play in half number two. Let's send it down to the field. Jill Montgomery. Coach, what's the status on why D. Milner's not playing? Uh, D. Milner had a pulled muscle uh, during the week of practice this week. We thought he'd be able to play today. He probably could play if we needed him to play, but we decided not to play him and want him to get hurt anymore. Well, even without him in there, you have stifled West Kentucky's offense. What has impressed you so far about your defense? Well, you know, we got to play the run a little bit better. We missed some tackles. We had a couple opportunities to get off on third down, and we didn't. But, you know, we just need to finish what we're doing. We need to finish drives on offense and, you know, score more points. I mean, this team's still in the game, but it's all really because of what we're doing, not because of what they're doing. Coach, thanks. All right, Mike. All right, thank you very much, Jill. That's the end of the first half. Alabama leading it 21 to nothing. Let's send it to Kevin Carter and Matt Schick in the studio for the C Spire Halftime Report. 21 to nothing, our halftime score here from Tuscaloosa, Alabama leading Western Kentucky. Brian Denny Stadium, the home opener for the Crimson Tide, well over 100,000 fans, and they were treated to a good first half for Alabama. Not a bad first half for Western Kentucky. They showed some signs both offensively and defensively, but Chris, it's hard to overcome those turnovers. Western Kentucky had some success moving the football against that Alabama defense, but it was the self-destruction, the turnovers in their own territory. Three of them led to 14 points for Alabama, and you just can't do that against a team like the Crimson Tide. Meanwhile, Alabama offensively very sharp, running and passing the football. Yeah, very impressed with A.J. McCarron today. They put the ball in his hands. He's completed eight passes to four different receivers, so really spreading it around nicely to the field. Let's take a look at that touchdown pass to Jones there. They bunch formation tight, leaves a lot of room to the wide side of the field, trying to recognize it's single high safety there. Is it cover three or is it cover one? As soon as the corner bites on that flat route, A.J. McCarron knows he's got Jones to the corner of the end zone. Nice throw there. Jones nearly bobbles the football ball going out of bounds and able to secure it for a touchdown. As we take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Crystal, nothing like it. Alabama, 48 yards on the ground. Western Kentucky gladly will take that number, but 161 through the air. A.J. McCarron nearly flawless in the first half, and obviously the three turnovers, the biggest number on the board. Hilltoppers will get it first here in the second half. From the four. And a nice hold. Nice job of weaving through traffic and down to the 30-yard line as we set it down to the field with Jill Montgomery. Well, Mike, I just talked with Western Kentucky's coach Taggart as he came out of the locker room, and he said, we have to execute better. He said, Alabama isn't stopping us offensively. We are stopping ourselves. We have to stop turning the ball over. He said, there's two things we have to do this half, execute and execute. I'm sure Western Kentucky would love nothing more than to do just that. Antonio Andrews with a good first half. Western Kentucky did have a good drive in Alabama territory, but they've got to do a better job of handling the football. Back to the ground game and surging forward. A gain of a couple for Leon Allen. Take a look at how much movement this Western Kentucky offense has a lot of shifts, a lot of motions, as we talked about in the first half. Nick Saban concerned about his young defense, able to communicate. You saw that time C.J. Mosley calling the checks, getting everybody lined up, and they did a good job of adjusting and getting in position there as they stopped the run for about a three-yard gain. I love what Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator for Alabama, told us. He said, you know, they're just going to keep running and running as much as you'd like them to stop. They're stubborn about it. They will throw here and completes it to the tight end right near the marker at the 40. That is Jack Doyle, the senior out of Indianapolis. And that's another one of those plays that Kirby Smart talked about. Very good in the stick game. You saw the fullback go to the flat. Doyle comes up on a five yard out route. Even though he's covered, can use his body very well as Jakes delivers the strike into his chest and they pick up a first down. 
Again, if you're just joining us, Alabama without the services of Dee Milner, the reigning SEC Defensive Player of the Week. John Fulton getting the start in his place, number 10. On play action. Jakes throws it, picked off at the 40. And finally wrestled down is Dion Blue. A penalty flag on the play. That would be turnover number four on the Hilltoppers. It's a big time face mask there. Dion Blue does a nice job of jumping that route. Ball behind, easy pick. And then in the return, one of the big offensive linemen grabbed Dion Blue right across his face mask, nearly ripped his helmet off. Personal foul, face mask, 65, Western Kentucky. Penalty's half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first out. That's on the center, Sean Conway. This was one of those decisions that Jakes would like to have back. The flat receiver is covered instead of throwing it away. Tries to force one in there. The ball behind makes it an easy interception for Dion Blue. And there you saw the face mask setting up Alabama inside the 15-yard line. Again, another turnover gives Alabama a short field situation. We'll see if Nussmeyer goes for the end zone right here on first down. Can't remember the last time I said this in a third quarter, but that's the first penalty of the game. McCarron out of the gun and throws it incomplete. Trying to hit Michael Williams, the senior tight end. That time Western Kentucky went with a cover zero blitz, bringing six guys against Alabama's five, forcing McCarron to throw the ball before he was ready. And that time Michael Williams not able to get open. Uh, it's been tough for that man, Lance Guidry, in his Hilltopper defense. This is the third time Alabama has started a drive in Western Kentucky territory. Lacey, the lone back. McCarron rolling, firing, touchdown, Alabama. Kevin Norwood hauls it in the fourth touchdown pass for McCarron. Take a look at A.J. McCarron here. Keeps the play alive, and Kevin Norwood does a good job against the press coverage of getting outside release. Knows he's going to the corner. Knows if he's got him on his hip, he's going to have a wide open area in the end zone. And McCarron delivers the strike for a touchdown. He is the old man of this receiving core. He's a junior surrounded by freshmen and sophomores. Kevin Norwood with the grab. Matt, thank you so much. Tyler Bray, three touchdown passes. Tennessee trying to gain some momentum going to that big matchup against the Gators next week. And right now, Florida trailing Texas A&M on the road. It'd be like the old days if Florida's able to win this game at Texas A&M and Tennessee's able to continue winning. Can't remember the last time both of those teams were undefeated when they faced off. Not returnable for McNeil as he'll take a knee. Hilltoppers will have it at the 25 as we take a look at some of today's loyal fans brought to you by Hyundai. Go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. They know how to pack the house here in Tuscaloosa. They added about 10,000 seats a couple of years ago, and they still fill it on a weekly basis. Fans of all ages enjoying the home opener here in Tuscaloosa, the defending national champions, the number one ranked team in America. Trying to have another impressive showing before a big one next week against Arkansas. Good first down carry by Allen as he keeps those legs churning. Nine yards for Allen. 
before being brought down by Dion Blue. Four turnovers, that's really the story of this game. And if you're Western Kentucky, you knew you had to play a nearly flawless game to have a chance. And so far, it's been anything but flawless. But, you know, you look at it, four turnovers inside their own territory, and they're only down 28. Right. I mean, if you hold on to the football, you actually might have a chance. Off right tackle and first down yardage gobbled up again by 33, Leon Allen. He's a good looking freshman from Bradenton, Florida, the hometown of the head coach, Willie Taggart. Willie Taggart, who was a great player, an assistant coach on the national championship team back in 2002. That's when they were a 1AA team. Now, of course, in the FBS to the Sun Belt. The only team they lost to last year was to Arkansas State. You might remember the coach of Arkansas State last year was Hugh Freeze. He's now in the SEC at Ole Miss. See how you connect the dots? And Gus Malzahn now at Arkansas State. That's right. Straight up the gut on first down. The thing I like about Willie Taggart is he's passionate about his alma mater. He's a WKU guy, played there, was an assistant there, now comes back as a head coach. As you mentioned earlier, he inherited a team that was on a 20-game losing streak. They lost six more in his first year before they are able to get their first victory. And there's a lot of players that could have cashed it in, but he had those players hang in there. He tried to change the mentality to where they expected to win every time they went out. And now they've all kind of bought into that same passion for their school that Willie Taggart has. You can tell he's a well-respected coach and a guy that these guys play hard for. And they don't lack confidence. They were looking forward to this ball game. Very excited to walk through yesterday. Pass over the middle on second down, and that should move the chains. Who else but Antonio Andrews? Eight yards for Andrews. Well, we take you back to yesterday. Not your typical walkthrough. They're wearing, oh, the sweater vest, Chris. It was about 90 degrees yesterday. I have a lot of admiration for these guys. 90 degrees, 95% humid, humidity down there, but these guys taking pictures, having fun. This is not their first time in an environment like this. We mentioned they played LSU last year. They've played at Nebraska in recent years. They've had a chance to play at Tennessee as well. So they know about going into big venues. And I think it's a treat. These guys certainly look like they were having fun out there yesterday and again today playing in front of 100,000. They've got Kentucky coming up, another SEC school. Allen goes nowhere this time on first down, stacked up right at the line. Adrian Hubbard, number 42, in on the play. That's a big sign of respect, the fact that now Western Kentucky and Kentucky are playing each other every single year. It's a rivalry that Willie Taggart said, look, we have to start winning a few of these games before we get respect from our in-state rival. But I think this might be their best chance that they've had in a couple years to get that victory over their, their rival in the Wildcats. Second and ten. Again over the middle, this time to the tight end, Jack Doyle. Jack Doyle's going to put up some big numbers in the Sun Belt this year. One of the top tight ends in that conference, met by C.J. Mosley. Really does a good job of using his body as well. We talked to earlier about his ability to run those intermediate routes, shield some of those defenders. They're draped all over him, and he's able to keep his concentration, catch the football, and move the ball for this Kentucky, Western Kentucky offense against a, a very good defense. You got it at the 46 of Alabama. You might be thinking four down territory here, third down and four. And movement. I do believe on Western Kentucky. Part of the snap, false start, 63 offense, five yard penalty, still third down. That's on Polanco, the guard. You saw Adrian Hubbard flinch a little bit at him, and certainly Polanco trying to get set in that pass protection. In the NFL, that might be on the defense, but in college, that's a five yard false start penalty. Hilltoppers today are three of seven on third down. Now it's a third and nine. Jake's in the pocket. Finds Andrews. Written down from behind at the 45. He needed the 42. 
So decision time here for Willie Taggart. That's an impressive play by C.J. Mosley as well. He's got man-to-man -man coverage against the smaller and quicker Antonio Andrews. Allows him to catch the football, but makes a sure tackle short of the first down mark. And the Hilltoppers send the punting unit out of the field. You get a look at Jones, who's had a good day on offense. A pair of touchdowns. Delay of game, kicking team, that penalty's declined, remains fourth down. A rather flawless game penalty-wise. We just saw our first penalty of the game a few moments ago here in the third quarter. Directional kick toward the sideline. And we'll see where they mark it. He's still going. And stops at the 26. It'll be Alabama football when we return. A.J. McCarron looking for another touchdown pass. 28-0 our score. It's been all about A.J. McCarron today in the passing game for the Crimson Tide as he's been absolutely on point, making great decisions in who he's throwing the football to. And then the touch and the accuracy. You see it here on the corner route to Christian Jones. Even on the move, rolling to his right, and a strike to Kevin Norwood for his fourth of the day. Great exhibition by the Alabama Crimson Tide offense. A.J. McCarron, four touchdown passes, one away from the school record. I still love when you go back to what that young man did at the national championship game. Everybody going into last season was saying, well, yeah, Alabama can run the ball, but what about quarterback? Well, McCarron showed he can throw the ball very well. He stepped up. Kevin Norwood stepped up as well, and that's what Alabama does. When your number's called, you got to be ready to go. To the ground on first down and staggering forward for a couple. And that's Eddie Lacy, number 42. This started back a couple years ago. Remember when Dante Hightower went down in that 2009 season? It was Nico Johnson, the freshman, that stepped up and played admirably in his absence. You've seen guys graduate last year. Hightower gone to the NFL draft. Kirkpatrick, Barron. These guys move on, and the next guy for Alabama steps up and plays to a very high level. McCarron on second and eight. Rifles almost picked off. Great job jumping the route by Cam Thomas, but a penalty flag on the field. He makes a bad decision here throwing late to the out route, but it's going to turn out to be a pass interference call. Amari Cooper, the intended target. Pass interference, defense number four. Ball to be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Andrew Jackson. McCarron comes back a little bit late there. Cooper may have cut his route a little bit short. You wouldn't think that A.J. McCarron would make a mistake like that. Nearly an interception, but first and 10 for the, for the time. And today's first and 10 line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers as McCarron is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That's the third sack for Western Kentucky, Quinteris Smith, the all Sun Belt performer. 11 yard loss on the play. As I mentioned before, that pocket protection was poor last week. And even today here, they're bringing five guys. And Alabama's offensive line just getting flat out beat, something you wouldn't expect from a guy that's had an offensive line that's had as many cumulative starts as these guys have played together. And they're led by the man. In the middle, Barrett Jones, the All-American, the reigning Outland Trophy winner. Screen pass set up on second and long. Spin move before being pummeled to the turf. And about the 33-yard line, Christian Jones for 10. 
Now the Alabama offensive line, again, this could very well be the best in the nation. It's hard to measure it, but when you look at what these guys have been able to do, Jones, we talked about, Chance Warmack, he's a three-year starter. Fluker, a three-year starter. Steen has started about two and a half years. Quanjo is the new kid on the block, and he was all freshman in the SEC last year. Even more impressive than possibly being the best line in, in the country this year, maybe the best line in the history of Alabama football, which is saying a lot. That's saying a ton. On third down, McCarron tap dances. Dangerous pass back over the middle. Caught by Yeldon at the 40. And that'll be four yards shy of the first down. Time now for our SEC Trivia Challenge, brought to you by Regents Bank. Who holds the Alabama single-game record for most touchdown passes? McCarron's got a chance to tie it. A lot of tradition here at Alabama. A lot of great quarterbacks that have rolled through Tuscaloosa. Good-looking punt as Andrews waits on it and calls for the fair catch. We'll have the answer to that trivia question on the other side. It'll be Western Kentucky football when we return. Alabama 28, Hilltoppers nothing. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa where Alabama leads Western Kentucky 28 to zero. Mike and Chris, you guys were talking earlier about Barrett Jones. He works very hard as the center of the offense of this team. He works hard on the, on the field, but he also works very hard off the field. He goes on missions to places like Haiti. His most recent one this year was in Nicaragua, and I asked him, what was the most impactful thing that you learned about that mission? And he said, really and truly, he said, the grand scheme of things playing football is nothing. He said, it makes you put things in perspective and makes you realize what's important in your life, and it's really not football. He said to play football for him is just a privilege. All right, thank you, Jill. Great stuff. It's almost too good to be true when you talk to that young man in person, Barrett Jones, kind of a gentle giant, but you don't want to line up against him, that's for sure. On first down, look out. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide for Leon Allen. Knifing in Ed Stinson, the junior out of Homestead, Florida. You know, we talked earlier about how these guys that we spoke with yesterday are such good people off the field as well as on the personal development program that Nick Saban has here is as impressive as, as any place around and, and the fact that very few guys in trouble off the field these guys are good players but even more impressive they're the, they're good students good citizens and that's kind of what the expectation level here at Alabama is it's not an accident that's what they expect that's how they recruit and that's how they coach their young men up on and off the field. On second and long, it's Jakes. Threads the needle. Nice pass to Bo Brand. First reception for Brand and a gain of eight. You know, a lot of coaches give lip service to the fact that they want you to come here and be good citizens and graduate. But Alabama puts their money where their mouth is. You talk about that peer intervention program. They have a... A psychologist on staff here that works with the guys, a sports psychologist. They have all sorts of tutoring options, guys. Everything they do is built around making these players better people off the field. And Coach Saban says when you make them better off the field, it translates to being a better player on the field. Third and short. It'll depend if they give them forward progress. If so, I believe Jack Doyle's got the first down. Wrestle to the turf by Quinton Dix. I'd called his name much today. He was very active last week against Michigan. Been quite a, kind of quiet today in the secondary, but he's a guy that's going to be a tremendous player, just a sophomore out of Orlando, somebody that the coaches are very high on here in Tuscaloosa. Well, you know about the starters if you follow Alabama football in the secondary, but Geno Smith, Landon Collins, Quinton Dix, that's the future. First and ten. And wisely throwing it away is Jakes. 
been pretty difficult for the Hilltopper wideouts to separate, Chris. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a lot of athletic ability here in the secondary for Alabama. They've also been very physical. One thing that Kirby Smart said to us, we want to be stronger, more aggressive than any of the other defenses in the, L in the, in the SEC. They recruit more to size than they do speed. If they have to sacrifice a little bit of that speed, they're willing to do so because they feel like they could be more physical with their opponents. And certainly, we've seen, seen them do that to the Hilltopper receivers today. All kinds of movement. Pre-snap for the Hilltoppers on second and ten. And again, those runs up the middle getting harder and harder to come by as Vinny Sinceri makes the stop. Well, basketball season is around the corner, and so is one of the premier preseason events. Come to Atlanta to see Michigan State take on Kansas and Duke battle Kentucky in the second annual State Farm Champions Classic. For more information, go to thechampionsclassic.com today. Mike Morgan alongside Chris Doring here from Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The Crimson Tide, that number one ranking, leading at 28 to nothing. Western Kentucky turnovers have killed this offense and a third and long here blitz over the middle complete and a first down for Bo Brand 20 yards on that hookup that right there is right on K1 Jakes the guy makes the play able to step up in the pocket avoid the outside rusher and then throws a dart right there to Bo Brand for the first down there he is stepping up, buying him some extra time, allowing his receiver to break open. And that's the problem sometimes when you bring pressure. If you don't get to the quarterback, you leave some holes open in that secondary. That time, Jake's able to take advantage. Little dump off pass. And falling forward for a couple is Andrews. Well, we talked about the trivia question involving A.J. McCarron. He's got four touchdown passes. The school record is five. Who holds it for the Crimson Tide? The name might surprise some folks. Gary Hollingsworth, five times back in 1989. That was at Ole Miss. Some of the other guys that threw for four, Mike Shula and John Parker Wilson. That play goes nowhere for Bo Brand. Fans, be sure to visit the region's tent next weekend in Fayetteville, Arkansas, for their SEC Trivia Challenge event. Regions Bank, the official bank of the SEC. Will McCarron get to five, maybe six? Who knows? Still plenty of time in this one as we're winding down quarter number three. Not sure McCarron returns here in the fourth quarter. You got a 28-point lead. Maybe an opportunity to get one of your backups Bill Beli yet to play in his college career, so it'd be nice to get a chance to take a look at him. Penalty flags all over the play. That one's on the right tackle, Seth White. Well, the other factor in that equation, Chris, is obviously a huge game next week, not just for Alabama. The SEC and the nation will be looking on when Alabama takes on Arkansas, a lot riding on that game. Arkansas is one of those teams that could go either way. Obviously, a lot of bad stuff going on there in Fayetteville during the offseason. But you look at that. That's the big game right there. We're looking at September 15th. You don't think these guys are starting to look ahead a little bit. You're fooling yourself because that's going to be positioning here in the SEC West early in, in September. On third and 13. Short pass underneath, but that won't get it done. Jack Doyle on a reception at the 46. And that puts an end to quarter number three. Can Western Kentucky score? Or will Alabama tack on some more? 28-0 our score from Tuscaloosa. 28 to nothing, our score, Alabama on top of Western Kentucky as we get you ready for quarter number four. Great crowd on hand, the home opener here in Tuscaloosa, a packed house, over 100,000 fans looking on and watching their Crimson Tide with a convincing performance thus far. The golden number for Alabama today has been four. They have forced four turnovers, and A.J. McCarron has thrown four touchdown passes. That's your story thus far from Bryant-Denny Stadium. 
Nick Saban imploring his team earlier in the week, stay focused. Don't take anybody for granted. So far, that's been the case for Alabama. Jones camps under it. Did not call for the fair catch. Weaves his way through traffic and somehow gets out to the 23-yard line. Dangerous play and a 13-yard return. So let's see who comes out for the Alabama offense. Looks like it'll be McCarron. One touchdown pass away from the school record. Nick Saban doesn't strike me as the guy that leaves players in there just to break records, you know? I mean, I, <laughs> I certainly don't believe that's the case. Probably some things he still wants to work on with his first team offense. You can bet another score here probably gives some second and third string guys an opportunity. I'll tell you another record that McCarron is chasing in just a moment. McCarron over the middle, in and out of the hands as it falls incomplete intended for Kevin Norwood. He that's says, my, hey, that's my bad. handed guy. Yeah. Man. Kevin Norwood, my, we ask him what he does best. He said catch the football right there that time. Maybe losing a little bit of concentration as we're late in the fourth quarter. Let's it bounce off his shoulder pad there. But normally very sure handed and the guy that's really the leader amongst this Alabama wide receiver core. It's the kind of pass that could be intercepted off the deflection if you're not careful. Big hole left side for Yeldon. He takes a tackler with him on a seven yard ride. Well, A.J. McCarron came into this game with 116 consecutive passes without an interception. Brody Croyle has the record 190. And of course, Alabama has not turned it over again today. They really do a good job of emphasizing protecting the football, whether it's in the running game, securing the ball with four points of pressure or throwing the football, throwing it away if there's nothing there. Don't try to force anything, and that's something McCarron does really well. McCarron surveys, buys time, and completes it for a first down and some more. And finally down to the 40. Four yard line, that is T.J. Yeldon, as you saw McCarron directing traffic. How about the freshman there, T.J. Yeldon, the guy that plays running back, but looks like he can play wide receiver as McCarron has all day to kind of bounce around, look back and forth and survey the field. It's Yeldon looking like he's gonna go down the sideline, then stopping and coming back to the football, giving him a viable target to dump it off to. That's a heady play by a true freshman. 14 yards and the first down. Yeldon stays in the game at tailback. They fake it to him. McCarron, not this time. Trying to buy time, but Quinteris Smith said that's enough. That was the mistake right there on A.J. McCarron. You got nobody open. You either got to throw it away or step up. Fading in the pocket there only allowed the defense time to collapse in the pocket. Ended up taking him down. He loses 11 yards on the play. Tell you what, Quinteris Smith, 93 for Western Kentucky. That guy could play for the SEC. He's a good looking ball player. Second down and 21, and the pass sails high. One of the few times today that McCarron has been off target. Sometimes you can't tell whether it's McCarron or one of the receivers in terms of getting their depth on the route. As we talked to Coach Nussmeyer yesterday, the offensive coordinator, a lot of youth and inexperience at the wide receiver spot, a lot of talent as well, but these guys still have to learn the art of running proper routes, getting your depth, getting out of your break. And so it was a little bit of an errant throw, but did the receiver run the route to the right depth? That's the question. Alabama facing a third and 21. Conservative play call here. One broken tackle, and that's all as Fowler, their versatile fullback, is knocked out of bounds by Jamarcus Allen, a pickup of six, and the Crimson Tide will punt it away. Fowler's a guy you know I have a crush on, man. A guy that's a <laughs> team guy, a guy that plays a lot of H-back. He plays some fullback. We saw him run the football a little bit last week against Michigan. And the coaching staff, you talked to him, said Fowler doesn't really get the notoriety that he deserves outside the locker room, but you can bet he's got the 
great amount of respect from his teammates in that locker room. They list him at 242, but kind of joking around with Doug Nussmeyer said, oh, yeah, he's over 250. From inside the 20 and not a good decision by Antonio Andrews as he is pummeled as soon as he grabs it. 28 nothing our score from Tuscaloosa Alabama back on offense when we return. It's been all Alabama thus far the defending national champions leading it 28 to nothing the story on offense has been AJ McCarron four touchdown passes 13 of 18 defensively Alabama has been sharp as well forcing four turnovers in this game. Under 12 minutes remaining Hilltoppers with the ball. And a run of the outside. Picks up about four. That's Willie McNeil, number 10. Sophomore from Bradenton, the hometown of the head coach, Willie Taggart. As we talked yesterday to Willie Taggart a little bit, of, it's, it's a challenge to come into a venue like this against the number one team in the country. But if you can compete with these guys, if you can hang in there with these guys, it makes it that much easier as you get into your conference schedule. And certainly, they had a lot of success last year going 7-1 and one in the Sun Belt. This year, they feel like they can win that conference. And I think, based upon what I've seen today, their ability to move the football, to get that Alabama offense off the field, they're going to be better off in their conference this year for playing a game like this. Out of the gun, second down, and back to the tight end, the reliable one. Jack Doyle. Well, I think you hit on a key thing yesterday when we were at walkthrough. They passed the eyeball test right yeah. off the bat. I mean, they've got some athletes, they've got some big guys, they've got some speed. And for a conference like the Sun Belt, there's no reason why Western Kentucky can't be a power in that league. College football these days is all about recruiting. And you look at what Western Kentucky's been able to do. They've gone down there, they've got 32 guys from the state of Florida. We know how good those athletes typically are. And when you're able to recruit that way, it's because you've done a couple of things. You created excitement about your program, and they've also upgraded the facilities. $50 million they've dedicated to the facilities. Pass over the middle, nifty move at the 35 on a juke, and past the 40 for a first down is Antonio Andrews, who has been an absolute workhorse today. He's an impressive player. Again, we called him, Coach Tagger called him the Reggie Bush of their team, and he reminds you a lot of that, a guy that's able to carry out of the backfield. We've seen his return abilities and then some niftiness after the catch, catching it out of the backfield. Definitely a triple threat, one of the guys you want to get the football to if you're Willie Tiger. You see the numbers on Jake's total yardage actually rather even in this game. Western Kentucky 230, Alabama 247. Shakes is absolutely devoured behind the line of scrimmage. Don't know if he ever saw Ed Stinson coming. Take a look to the right side of your screen there. The 49 come off the inside and absolutely blow Jake's up right in his mouth. That's not what you want to see. Is a guy stands inside 6'4", 280, coming free up the middle. But the big man delivered a punch there to Jakes. They've got some beef on that line. Stinson actually the smallest of the three at 282. On second down. And this time, Alabama reading the play to Jack Doyle, who has been the number one target. Stinson had a big game last week. He stepped up in that game against Michigan and then today continuing that tradition of having dominant defensive linemen here in Kirby Smart's defense. You know what I liked about what Kirby Smart said that was interesting. He said everybody's going faster, faster, faster. We'll go for the bigger yeah. guy before we go for the faster guy. We are all about being big and Alabama is certainly one of the biggest teams in America. Another free snap penalty before Western Kentucky gets the snap off. This game was rather flawless in the first half. A little bit of sloppiness for the Hilltoppers at half number two. 
Prior to the snap, false start, 75 offense, five yard penalty, still third down. It's a second one on Seth White. To expound on your point there about beefing up being the bigger team, Kirby Smart, talk to us about, they, they commit to stopping the run. They want to take away your will to run the football and force you to become one dimensional. And that commitment to stop the run, a lot of teams talk about that, but their commitment starts with the type of players that they're recruiting, the bigger, more physical players that can just eat up opposing offensive lines. Right. Third down in Birmingham. <laughs> Draw play, nothing doing. Alabama reads it. Antonio Andrews really had no opening, no crease at all. Petway in on the stop for the Crimson Tide, and Western Kentucky will have to punt it away. Starting to see some of the backup players get a chance to play on this defense. We saw Petway making a play there. He's the third string guy at that nose guard spot. Guy we didn't call his name a lot tonight, Jesse Williams, the Australian born nose guard. You see that YouTube video of him benching over 600 pounds? Yes, he's a great story. Absolute monster. They saw him, first they saw him playing rugby. Somebody said, I'm gonna give this guy a football jersey, see what he could do, went Juco and wound up at Alabama as Jones hauls it in inside the 30. Penalty flag on the play as he's knocked out of bounds near the 45. Jones has been a busy man today. A couple of touchdown grabs and a whole lot of punt returns. Not a wise decision by Kenny Bell here. You got to be able to get your head across, and it looked like the returner had the edge anyway. Kind of an in unnecessary block there, but gets him right square in the back, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. During the return, we had two fouls. Block in the back on the receiving team, number four. That penalty's declined. Illegal block in the back, number seven, during the return. That foul will be enforced. Fifth first down. <laughs> First penalty on Alabama all day long. 8-10 remaining in this one. Alabama in the lead, 28 to nothing. Eight ten to play here in Tuscaloosa. Alabama leading at 28 to nothing as we take a look now at our Good Hands Play of the Day brought to you by Allstate. One of the four touchdown passes and a great catch by Jones. You know why that's the Good Hands Play? He got three catches here. Bobbles it two or three times before <laughs> he's able to bring it in, but ultimately the touchdown, one of a two touchdowns on the day for Christian Jones. Two for Jones, four for that man, A.J. McCarron, who is one away from the school record. The Alabama offense has been pretty much flawless. They've been able to run well, pass well, and they've gotten some help from four turnovers by the Hilltoppers. McCarron leads the offense back onto the field. I'm sure Alabama wouldn't mind finding that end zone at least one more time before this game is over. 28 nothing here at this point in time. Like you said, not a lot of mistakes made by Alabama. Four turnovers by Western Kentucky. You, you look at the stat sheet before the game and see those kind of numbers, you're, you're figuring it's a, you know, maybe 42 nothing type ball game. Modest game for Fowler. Let's check in with Jill Montgomery. Well, Mike, Alabama has an arsenal of weapons on offense, and it's due largely in point to new offensive coordinator Doug Mus Nussmeyer, and you would think that he might have a little bit of a transitional period coming here, coming from a West Coast offense when he was at University of Washington, but it, his transition actually has been seamless. Garrett Jones told me yesterday, not only has it been seamless, but he's built a close relationship with him by showing him kind of the cult-like traditions that they have here on their offense, and he says he's also brought some offensive weapons of his own. On second down, pass complete right near the marker 
to the freshman Amari Cooper. I'll tell you why it's been seamless. It's been seamless because he didn't come in and try to change the offense and teach, you know, 35 guys the new offense. He came in and learned what they were doing. He, this offense has been very successful under Nick Saban. They're going to continue to do what they do. They have an identity that they've recruited to. But Nussmeyer brings some, a few wrinkles of his own, and certainly the play calling ability today has been spot on. He replaces Jim McElwain, who's now the head coach of Colorado State. Inside handoff. And more work for just Justin Fowler. So the big man getting some action on this drive. Justin Fowler does a little bit of everything for this team. We've seen Yeldon, we've seen Lacey. And now a heavy dose of number 45. Back to Fowler on second and four. The big man keeping those feet pittering and pattering in. Inside, past the 40. And a first down for Alabama, a nine yard gain before Dowling brings him down. Fowler is an absolute load at 6'1", 240. Not the guy you want to meet in the hole if you're one of these Western Kentucky defenders. Under six minutes to play. McCarron on play action. And another sack for Western Kentucky. Let's check in with our guys in the studio. A great day at the office for Tower Bray. And how about the Gators back on top as we check out the SEC news and notes. Auburn now 0-2. Mississippi State a big win at home. Texas A&M trailing. 24th ranked Florida as we just mentioned. And a big one tonight. Missouri. First ever SEC game tonight at 7.45 on ESPN2 as they take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Justin Flower, who's been busy on this drive, down on the ground after this last carry. Fowler trying to block for A.J. McCarron gets leg whipped by one of the Western Kentucky defenders. You hope that's not a serious injury. Certainly looking like he's not able to put much weight on that left knee. Now hopefully he'll be okay. That's an unusual kind of. We don't see a guy get a leg whipped very often no, like that. No, not, not from that direction either. But unfortunately, it looks like he's fairly hurt there. And, you know, a lot of people may think, ah, you lose him, not a big deal. You got Yeldon, you got Lacey, you got some other talented backs. But this is a guy, as I mentioned before, does it all as an H-back, as a fullback, as a runner. And that's a big loss if you're not able to get him back for next week's game against Arkansas. Meanwhile, D. Hart checks in, his first carry, and picks up a couple. During the five-minute mark of this ball game, Alabama, a couple of early scores off of turnovers. A.J. McCarron, nearly a flawless effort. And once again, the Crimson Tide, without that big mistake, no turnovers. Something they do so well. McCarron on third and nine. Would you believe another sack for Western Kentucky? That's a half dozen for the Hilltoppers. Barry Boyd on that one. I'm telling you, watching the tape against Michigan last week, they really did a poor job of protecting McCarron in the pocket. And we asked Doug Nussmeyer about that. He said that's one of the things they've tried to emphasize in getting better from week one to week two. But clearly, they have not been able to fix whatever's going on up there. And you look at these guys, the veterans that they have playing that have all played a number of games together over the years, for them to be able to not protect better against Western Kentucky has got to be concerning for Nick Saban. Really the only hitch today for the Alabama offense. Bobble putt. Mandel running. Mandel 
down near the marker. I think he's got it. That was not a design play. Mandel put it on the turf, really had no choice but to run, and picks up 19 yards and a first down. How about Cody Mandel? Drops the snap, nearly compounds it by deciding to run, jumps out of a tackle, and then able to get to that first down marker just barely. You can bet he saved himself a good yelling from Nick Saban by being able to pick that one up. Cody Mandel, but punters aren't supposed to win foot races, are they, Chris? Well, you're certainly not supposed to uh, be as athletic as he looked there, avoiding the tackle and being able to outrun some of those Western Kentucky defenders. But the big mistake, obviously, dropping the snap right in your chest. That's unfortunate. Today's first and ten line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers and a timeout called by Alabama. 328 remaining as Nick Saban looks on. We're going to see Blake Sims out there for Alabama here. We'll get a look at that young man at the quarterback position when we come back from the other side here of the break. Academy Sports Right Stuff Player of the Game is A.J. McCarron. Exhibited the right stuff today. Our player of the game brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low prices every day. And McCarron, the final numbers, 14 of 19, 219 yards, four touchdowns. Just one off the school record, the second career four touchdown game. For that man, number 10, A.J. McCarron. About as clean as performance as you could see from a quarterback. Very efficient today. You mentioned the 14 completions, four of those going for touchdowns. Spread the ball around nicely to that talented wide receiver core. So pretty impressive day for A.J. McCarron. Blake Sims now in at quarterback, the redshirt sophomore. Hand off to D. Hart. Here for an injury update, it's Jill Montgomery. We just saw Fowler getting carted off of the field, and athletic training staff isn't telling me anything, but when they brought him over to the sidelines, it looked like they were testing his left knee. He was grimacing in pain, and as you guys saw, he had his head buried into the chest of one of the athletic trainers, so if I find anything else out, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you, Jill. We already talked about the value that he brings to that backfield. They've got plenty of tailbacks, but he is a bruising blocker at the fullback spot. As Hart gobbles up a few more up the middle, give him four. I can tell you, getting carted off the field, not a good sign. I tore my Achilles tendon when I was playing for the Denver Broncos, and when you're on that, that cart and you realize kind of the finality of the season, not to, not to say that Fowler's done for the season, but when you're on that cart, it's just a devastating feeling, and you certainly feel for that young man. Third down and three. Sims out of the gun. Finds Hart. Staggers and then falls forward for the first down. Let's take a look at our BMW drive of the game. It came early on in the first half. It ended with that juggling reception by Christian Jones. Seven plays, 69 yards, 349 off the clock. One of four touchdown passes for McCarron. One of two touchdown receptions for number 22. To the ground again, wide left, look out. Nothing but daylight ahead, and a touchdown. Kenyon Drake. Thirty-two yards for the fifth touchdown of the day for the Crimson Tide. A little different play package for Sims. A little zone read, makes the right decision. Hands the ball to Kenyon Drake, able to take it down the sideline for a touchdown. That there shows you how deep this stable of running backs is on this Alabama roster. He's a newcomer out of Powder Springs, Georgia. And with a minute 47 remaining, Alabama now leads it 35 to nothing. He's not smiling, but Nick Saban has to be happy with the performance thus far today.
Today's SEC Network game is brought to you by Hyundai. Go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. The second annual State Farm Champions Classic, November the 13th in Atlanta, Georgia. Regions Bank, proud sponsor of the SEC. And by BMW, we only make one thing the ultimate driving machine. Plenty to smile about if you're wearing crimson today here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Over 100,000 fans packing the house. Alabama number one in the nation, leading at 35 to nothing over Western Kentucky. Mike Morgan alongside Chris Doring, AJ McCarron. Stealing the show offensively today, and the Alabama defense has been opportunistic, forcing several turnovers. Might be the final chance for the Hilltoppers to get on the board on this drive. McNeil will take it out. And not a good decision as he's buried shy of the 10. Let's take a look at our Polaris hardest working player of the game, and he is number 32, C.J. Mosley. Mosley, 11 tackles today, one sack, another pass breakup. I mean, this guy, he does it all, Chris. I mean, last week he had seven tackles. He's got 100 and 22 tackles in his career. And not to mention three interception returns for a touchdown. That actually tied the record of one Antonio Langham. And when you talk about the history of SEC football, that's one of those names that sticks out who had one of the biggest pick sixes that we've ever seen. When you mention Antonio Langham, it makes my skin crawl. <laughs> Having been on that Florida team in 1992 in the SEC championship game when Antonio Langham picked one to the house there, ultimately giving them the victory and propelling them into the national championship game against Miami where they devoured the Hurricanes that day. So I felt good at least that we hung in there against a very talented <laughs> Alabama team. Well, you know, Langham was a defensive back. C.J. Mosley does it from the linebacking spot. Well, the interesting thing, last week, C.J. Mosley, his third interception for a touchdown during his career, but Kirby Smart told us he actually dropped the wrong way. He <laughs> blew the assignment, so scores a touchdown, but when he gets graded by his coach, he gets a, a mental error. Hilltoppers keeping it on the ground, staying conservative here as the final seconds go off the clock under a minute remaining. Ben Axon, one of the backup running backs, getting the football there. Better days ahead for that man and better days ahead for this Western, Western Kentucky squad. Nothing to be embarrassed about at all. If you're Western Kentucky, I thought they did a good job. They showed that they could move the football, didn't protect very well, and then defensively, you got after A.J. McCarron all day long against one of the best offensive lines in the country, certainly the best you'll face all year. So I think there's a lot of coaching points that Willie Taggart can make to his team and a lot of confidence that should come from this game for the Hilltoppers as they get it into uh, Sun Belt Conference play in a couple games. Third down run is stymied Axon. Tackled near the line, and that should do it as the final seconds come off the clock. Your final score from Tuscaloosa, Western Kentucky 30. Western Kentucky 0, Alabama 35. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. Plenty more to come here from Tuscaloosa, including interviews and analysis. Stay tuned for that. But first, we'll send it to Kevin Carter and Matt Schick standing by in studio. For Joe Montgomery and Chris Doring, I'm Mike Morgan saying so long from Tuscaloosa. We'll be back with more in a moment. Let's send it now to Kevin Carter and Matt Schick.